you are not immune to deploy unless you like are on profile or get pregnant or something which i don't recommend you do back to my channel so in today's video I am filming a Q&A video mostly army related questions um, I'm excited I haven't done these I haven't done this video in a while I think like summertime is the last Q&A that, that I did as far as like army questions army questions the army question why sorry I'm like super tongue-tied um, but yeah I'm excited and I'm doing my makeup if you guys can see um, I did my makeup. Well, actually, I might have already done my makeup how would you know but um, I did my makeup and I um, just answer some questions so if you guys want to see this Q&A then let's get into the video let's get into the first question of the day and I know I saw this ratchet set up but we're just gonna flow with it I'm using the natural light from my window so if you guys hear like something outside it's just my neighbors <sighs> I'm working on it I'm working on it. it says hey dear am I am interested in joining the US Army as an 88 mic and I want to know what is the ASVAB score to qualify me. Um, so I know to get into the army, like just period, um, you have to get a, what do you have to get? I think it's a 35 or higher. I can't remember exactly. It's been so long since I've taken the ASVAB. Um, as far as like what you need to be 88 Mike, I really have no idea. Uh, initially I was going to, I was going to, um, go in the army as military intelligence but um the school was just too long and my ASVAB score wasn't quite enough to get do military intelligence um honestly I don't even remember my score but like I was pretty close but um it just wasn't high enough for that and then I kind of chose and also like the AIT the AIT for military intelligence is like super long and I really needed a, a shorter AIT which now like hindsight I wish I had just not cared about that because I ended up missing school anyway I just want because I need to get back to go to school like to finish out my semester of college and I just didn't want to get behind but I ended up getting behind anyway because my AIT like didn't match up with you know going back to school I mean I could have done it but it, it was cutting it way too close and I didn't want to do that to myself again like I did before um, like when I was in basic I did split ops I was the last group of people to be able to do split ops as a college kid they don't do that anymore so you only do it for high school but anyway I do not know exactly what the score is to become an idiot Mike I really didn't want like I just didn't know what I was doing back then like I I was like he's like oh do you want to be a truck driver and I was like oh that sounds really cool like you get to drive you get to drive Humvees and stuff and obviously you don't drive a freaking Humvee I mean we do drive Humvees but I'm thinking like these cool ass tanks and stuff and whatever but I didn't know any better I, I had no idea I was like cool sure I'll be an idiot Mike um and yeah but I ended up I mean I like it I like it it's whatever um I kind of wish I did something more medical but all of that medical stuff again it just along AIT I don't know if I could go back I definitely would you know choose something else but I just didn't know any better so I would suggest you Google what the um, ASVAB score is for to be an 88 mic. We'll see and see. So hope that answers. Hopefully that answers your question. All right. Someone asked me what camera do I use? This is not military related, but I'm ask, answering all questions. I like frequently ask questions that I get a lot. And I use the Canon G7X Mark II. Sorry, but this is like in the way. I said Canon G7X Mark II if you guys are interested. Everything that I mentioned in this video will be linked down below. And I always have the camera that I use linked down below as well. It's amazing quality. A lot of YouTubers use it. And I saved up to buy it a few years ago. I cannot remember exactly when I did, but I got it. I caught it like when it was on sale. And it's awesome. I use it for everything. I'll use it for vlogging. I used to use like the big um, DSLR cameras, like the Canon, what was it called? The really popular, the T, I had a T5i. 
works great but it's like this camera is so small and compact and it's even better quality than like the bigger DSLR cameras. Now I will say like my old DSLR is really good with pictures over this camera but this is like really good for like you know you want to do b-roll shots, filming videos like this, it just captures the lighting so well um, and I really don't use a lot of like outside lighting like or inside light like my diva ring light not diva ring light <laughs> I don't have the diva ring light I have like the another brand of it um, I, I don't have to use that as much only if I'm like filming at night and I don't have any like daylight to use but you can change and like fix the settings on there on the camera make the f-stop higher or lower as, as you want like it's awesome like the sun is starting to go down a little bit now but if I wanted to I could you guys can see I could like fix the exposure real quick like it's so simple so I really like it I'm gonna probably get another one eventually so I can use like for my sit down videos I can just you know use one camera and then for vlogging I can use another camera because it can kind of get a little confusing and a little hairy when you're trying to like go through footage or if you want to film more footage even though I could just you know I have a lot of memory cards <laughs> but just to be more organized all right next question is hopefully you reach 2k soon these questions are so old by the way um i reached 2k a little while ago and thank you guys for two 2000 subscribers um so it says why do you wear a helmet when you drive when driving a truck i'm a civilian hopefully this question sound doesn't sound weird okay so we have to wear a helmet so kind of think of it like driving a motorcycle like you know you have to wear a helmet why because you want to be protected and yes i know like you're inside of a you know inside of a car or a vehicle and like people don't wear like that inside of vehicles um but just in the military like just being deployed or anything like anything can happen you could roll over you could get you know roll over an ied or something which is an improvised explosive device um anything could happen and you just want your whole head your whole you know cranium to be protected um so it's important for that you can you know like i said roll over and like hit your head on something and your helmet will help you it i have been close um i was in a situation not like a crazy ass situation but i was getting on top of like the back of a truck or something and i hit my head really freaking hard on like this metal thing that was on the truck and it literally like i probably would have gotten a concussion and literally probably fainted like you know gotten knocked myself out if I didn't have it and it didn't hurt at all but you could hear how hard it was and I could feel like the force of hitting that object how like my helmet saved like literally saved my life so it's really really important to have some kind of protection of your head um, just in combat situations and then I think it's more of a like a liability thing as well um, just so because I we just do a lot of like physical you know manual work a lot so um, just for safety reasons <laughs> um don't want any crack skulls um someone said how did you prepare your mind for basic training how did i prepare my mind for basic um i'll do it like how i did it and then how i recommend doing it since you know i already graduated long ago so back in 2015 i was working you know i tried to keep myself busy so i didn't like like my mind wasn't so much on it like obviously like i was super super excited you know to go to basic training it's like a huge you know milestone huge lifestyle change it's like it's fun um and yeah i just try to keep myself busy i also try to you know exercise you know get my myself you know physically ready but really it's a it's a mental game over physical a lot of people ask me like you know how did you get ready you know i'm so you know i'm so nervous about the physical part of it you know and in my mind, I'm like, why are they so worried? But then I re remember, like, I was worried about that part. But the physical part, like, doing PT and stuff should be the last thing on your mind because you will be getting smoked so hard every day, 24-7. You will be fit, like, probably in, like, two weeks. Like, there's no way you won't get physically fit unless... Yeah, it's just... It's not possible. <laughs> but it's all a mind game. But I basically, yeah, I just try to... Try to do things that will set myself apart from everyone else so yeah working out and make make your life a little bit more a little bit easier but it's still gonna suck anyway um but yeah it's all a mental game what else did i do sorry i'm like scattered brain i'm trying to get this out here you are oh crud i mean you could like go on and like start learning like the soldier's creed and all that stuff but honestly 
just wait i would just wait like i just don't stress out about it just there's just really there's no way like there was no way that i could have done that you know back then it, or have really known what i was going through gonna go through um because everyone's experience is different you can watch all the videos you want but everyone's experience is going to be different i would just be calm try to get your mind right and just know like this these next few weeks a few months are really going to be tough but there are so many like i say it all the time there's so many people that go have gone through this before you and there is going to be tons of people who are going to do it after you like i went back to basic training in 2015 like and it's gone by so fast there'll be times where you wish you were back in basic training because you just miss the it doesn't seem simple simple at the time but it's it's so simple because everyone's telling you what to do how to do it when to do it and that, when you get out you have to figure out a lot i mean you're going to learn things but like you really have to figure out things for yourself like no one's going to tell you like how to eat how to sleep you know all that stuff so anyway i'm kind of getting off topic but yeah I, I really there wasn't really much i could really do you know I, I watched videos and i do encourage you guys to watch videos just to kind of get a little bit of insight of what to expect um but honestly like literally the weeks when i was getting down to the days of me leaving i kind of panicked a little bit like and i don't recommend panicking because there really there's nothing to panic about if you're a good person on the inside um, and you truly want to do well, you will. I would just say don't be that jerk, you know, that person that is making it hard for everyone else because basic training, you're, you're supposed to work together and when one person gets in trouble, everyone gets in trouble. So, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I just kind of like, honestly, I panicked a little bit because I was like, oh crap, this, this is really happening. My life is about to change like forever and it really, it really will change forever. You were you would change a lot in a good way and then now how would I recommend you like knowing now definitely just go in with a positive mindset no you know don't be negative and just spend as much time with your family as you can because you will not talk to them for a very long time and yeah just just do your best honestly you will never know how it's going to be like until you actually go through it. So, all right, next question. Do does do 88 mics deploy a lot? Um, so I, a lot of people think that deploying a, like a, your, how do I say this? A lot of people think that an MOS is what considers a person deployable or like how much they deploy or not like or not and it's really not it all goes by your unit and obviously like depending on your um like if you're infantry cavalry or something like that obviously they deploy probably more um but that's mainly because they're put in like that's a certain like unit if that makes sense so there's going to be 88 mics and in infantry in units there's going to be different um mos is like mixed in um there might be more infantry than 88 mics or vice versa but it all depends on the unit you're at like located at um like i know for my old unit we were at fru unit which is like we're the first to deploy if like we're the first on the list to deploy if a deployment comes up over the other units like in the area um or in georgia period um if that makes sense but it's not it doesn't it's not dependent on like your your mos and it also depends on your unit's rotation schedule. So usually um, National Guard units um, are like on a three, four year rotation. So they do a deployment like every four years or five years or whatever. It just depends on how ready the unit is. Um, and despite what people think, uh, National Guard actually deploys more than active duty does. And I learned that in AIT, I didn't know, know that. And that makes sense. Usually, like, when you go overseas to deploy, you attach to a active duty, like, National Guard units or reserve, whatever. Multiple units will attach to an uh, active duty unit and become one. So, hopefully, that answers your question. That should answer your question. So, it doesn't depend on your, um, your MOS. And also, I wanted to, to say, I get this a whole lot, and I also thought myself, I'm like, well, if I choose this, if I choose this, um you know mos then i won't deploy and that's not true every every single um sorry i'm so scatterbrained every single uh mos is deployable there's not 
but no such thing as no MOS deployable. So, cooks, 88 mics, administrative people working in the office, they go overseas, they go, you know, clear out buildings. I know a friend, they said they had cooks, you know, clearing out buildings in Afghanistan. You are not immune to deploy unless you like are on profile or get pregnant or something, which I don't recommend you do. All right guys, so I'm currently editing this Q&A for you guys to get up tomorrow. And I totally realized like it is so long and I don't want this to be a super long video. So I'm gonna do two parts, um, a Q&A part one and a Q&A part two will go up on Friday. So I hope that's okay with you all. So I just didn't want it to be a super long video. Literally the footage is like 30 minutes long and I'm not even like halfway through it. So I'm gonna do a um, two parts to this video. So thank you guys so much for watching part one of this Q&A and I'll see you guys in part two on Friday. Bye guys.